Our mission, the mission of World of Wellesley, is to make Wellesley a welcoming place for everyone. We will engage, and we have, in many events and opportunities to be able to bring people together to have conversations and definitely talk about issues, not just regarding race, um, but all human difference. So I am very, very grateful for the friendship and the opportunity to have uh, Tendai and Bobo uh, Muzikavanyu speak today. Bobo was one of the students that was targeted in the Facebook post this summer. Although it can seem hard to believe, racism is very much alive and affecting thousands of people in the United States every day. Unfortunately, racism is not a new concept in the town of Wellesley. It started from, I think it was in 1989, 1990, that we had an incident that happened in Wellesley um, that involved a newly signed Celtics player. It was Dee Brown. Yeah. That's right. So Dee Brown was with his fiance or wife um, driving through after, I think, seeing houses or uh, looking to purchase a house uh, in Wellesley and unfortunately um, fit the description um, of someone who had just uh, robbed a bank. And so it really um, gave a lot of people pause um, in, the, in the community in Wellesley. And so this group of people came together, um, wanted the program World of Wellesley to become like a human rights commission. And thus, the World of Wellesley was established. The organization is dedicated to making drowned out voices heard. Michelle and the organization are always enthusiastic about making a difference, not only in this town, but in the fight for equality. So I was actually um, reached out um, to by a parent in Wellesley um, that Friday night when uh, one of the students had, um, one of the students affected by the horrific posts, um, courageously posted an open letter to the town. Um, basically saying that, you know, this happened and I need people to know. Thank you, thank you. It's truly an honor to be able to address my town um, because it means that I have a chance to shed some light in this very dark situation. And it means that I can aid this town through this period of reflection. Racism is no new battle. It has been fought by those much older and wiser than I. This makes it very hard to not feel unqualified. Anytime any, um, anything like this, any language or action, physical, um, you know, um, just impacts people um, just so horrifically that, you know, if our mission is to make Wellesley a welcoming place, then, then that just cannot ever be allowed. When uh, someone's family is put to question and they are attacked racially or in any form, it is very difficult to be able to gather your thoughts and emotions. But thankfully, time and God has allowed me to stand before you today. It's traumatic. It's very, very traumatic when something like this happens. It's, um, it's truly a form of terrorism. I mean, you have to understand that when people talk about lynching and genocide, yeah, we can talk about those words but we have to understand that they have history, that they have meaning, okay, but that they literally have ended people's lives uh, horrifically. But even in my own qualification, I know that in every battle that we fought against racism, it is love and forgiveness that has won the battle, that has conquered the battle. You know, I grew up in Wellesley. I um, graduated Wellesley High School, and you know, I chose to bring my family back to this town. Um, I identify as white. My husband identifies as black, and we have two children together who are obviously mixed race or biracial. Um, so, being a white mom with two black boys, um, this impacts me a lot. You will hear today their truth.
Thank you for listening. And Tendai and Bobo. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Some of you have come from afar. I know some have come from as far as uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, people from all walks of life. We thank the number of you that have wept with us. We've had black and white and all shades weeping with us and uh, reflecting with us over this issue. You know, as a white person, um, I grew up um, just not understanding. I just did not know. Um, how racism can affect your soul and how um, your connections with other human beings can affect who you end up being. Calling me and my family the N-word. Questioning whether we were even human. Wanting us to go back to Africa and stating that our family were taking American jobs and that we would be lynched or genocided. Because if our children are growing up thinking that something is wrong with them, how can they ever reach their human potential? How can they ever be the people that God or whoever you believe intended them to be? I trust this town to do the right thing. I trust this town to do what it believes and I trust this town to believe in equality. Thank you. We wanted to give a place for families to be able to come together um, and connect. We um, are looking to do a fundraiser on September 30th, which is a Friday night. And again, the Wellesley Community Center is allowing us the space. And we are going to have an art exhibit. We are going to take two floors of the community center. And um, who's hosting it or, or sponsoring is um, a artist by the name of Robert Shetterly and he has a website called Americans Who Tell the Truth and he has created about three to four hundred portraits of amazing peacemakers and change makers in our world. So we're going to have about 30 of these portraits. They're beautiful large oil paintings and so um, we're asking for a fifty dollar donation uh, to come in and uh, view the portraits and then have an hour um, conversation and dialogue with uh, Robert Shetterly who will be with us that evening. So that's going to be September 30th on Friday from uh, 6.30 to 8.30 at the Community Center. And then we have the next day, October 1st, is our third annual Diversity Summit. I'm not naive to realize in, you know, 28 years in an interracial relationship that uh, racism is real. Um, and it has affected our lives, and it will probably always affect our lives. People of color have been trying for 400 years um, to get people to understand, or white people to understand and engage, and understand that um, the system's been rigged for all of us, and uh, we're all hurting as a result of it. And you might not see it, um, but you need to. You really need to. We see you, we hear you, we are grateful for you.